Now, I recently hit 5,000 subscribers, and I thank each and every one of you for that. That's a big deal to me. Now, to celebrate, I produced this video about VHS on VHS, as well as in 4K like you're watching here. Now, if you want to see the completely VHS version, check out the link in the video description below. Otherwise, stay put to watch it in 4K. Now, in all seriousness, when you stop to think about it, VHS really is magical. I remember when we got our very first VHS machine back in the early 80s. It was actually one exactly like this Hitachi right here. Now, just having the ability to record something and watch it later was amazing. The era of time shifting had begun. Skipping commercials, recording one thing and watching another, all that became a reality. And all thanks to an ingenious system and some magnetic tape. Now, did VHS have its limitations? Of course. Was it perfect? Absolutely not. Let's take a look today at the magic that happens inside a VHS videotape recorder and see how one of the ingenious features that shaped our lives may also have been the culprit to some of our bad experiences with the format. Now, I realize that there were other videotape formats before VHS was introduced, and even some that came and went during its life cycle. Yes, some were better, some were worse. The focus today, though, is VHS and some of its inherent quirks and flaws. Let's start off with the magic, though. To put it simply, recording a high bandwidth signal like video requires a few things. Magnetic tape, like cassettes or even reel-to-reel, -reel, are suited for audio because the bandwidth there is maybe 20 kilohertz. Move the tape across the stationary head at a speed of 15 inches per second or so, and you can create a near-perfect recording of the original source. Video, on the other hand, can require up to 5 megahertz or even more. There just simply isn't a reliable, simple way of recording that bandwidth onto a tape with a stationary head. Now, has it been done? Well, yes. Experimentation had to start somewhere. And as we know from audio recording, the faster you move the tape past a stationary head, the more signal information can be recorded on the tape. That's bandwidth. Well, to make that work with a stationary head for video, the tape has to move at like 10 feet per second. Now, not only does that use a lot of tape, but that speed creates a lot of wear on equipment, shortens the recording time, and imagine what would happen if you're standing next to that machine and the tape breaks. There had to be a better way. Introduce the helical scan system. Now let's jump over to the bench and explore the magic that happens inside this run-of-the-mill VCR. So for the look inside, I decided to switch to this Panasonic Omnivision. This is the ubiquitous blue stripe Panasonic that it seems like almost everybody had in their homes throughout the 90s and into the early 2000s. It was kind of the home VCR. So I figured I'd go with something that's a little bit more familiar to everybody that they would have seen in their house and maybe never took a look inside of back when they were actually using it. The other advantage that this machine has is it's a very open design. There's not really a whole lot hiding the mechanism and it's a little bit more simplified. It may make it easier for us to take a look at. Now, before we get into too much detail, this is going to give you kind of a run through of everything that this tape is going to have to touch as it moves through this system. This is where the magic comes into it. It's not like a stationary head audio recorder where there's one or two things that the tape has to touch. It has to touch a lot of things in a VCR. Now the tape actually ends up moving left to right, so we'll start over here. Now as far as the different heads go, we have an erase head here on this side. The tape's going to hit that first. It's going to erase any previous recordings on that tape to allow you to you know, make a new recording on it without the interference from a previous recording or movie or TV show that you had on there. Once it, once it passes by that, it's going to pass around our rotating head drum here. Now this whole assembly rotates, and within this assembly there are two openings for two video heads. Now the reason why there's two, as this is spinning at almost 2000 RPM for NTSC machines or about 1500 RPM for PAL machines, each pass of that head along the tape is recording one field of video. You have to remember that analog video is interlaced. So it's going to record one 
field. The head's going to rotate to the second head, record the second field. Those two fields are one frame. So every complete rotation of that head gives you one frame of video in two fields. Once it passes the video head, it passes by this head here, which is a combination control track head and audio head for the linear audio. Now, if it's a hi-fi machine, the hi-fi audio heads actually run on this rotating head drum. But they do have a linear audio, like more like a cassette deck, a stationary head audio here, as well as a head that records a control track onto the tape, basically pulses that the machine looks at to make sure that it's running at the right speed. It helps with tracking. So it reads and records those. Once it passes by that, we've got a pinch roller here and the cap stand, which come together to pull the tape across the mechanism at the correct speed. Now the Panasonics are odd because the cap stand is actually further in, you know, away from the tape than what it is in a lot of them, where this one actually lifts the pinch roller up, the tape goes underneath it, comes down. A lot of them are simpler where the cap stand is more towards the inside. Not sure why Panasonic did it this way, but it seems like they did that in a lot of their VCRs. So those are the major things that the tape has to touch. So let's go ahead and load a tape into it and watch how the tape loads around the head drum. So as we load this tape, I want you to watch what happens with these two guides here. They're actually going to be underneath the cassette and they're going to pull the tape out and wrap it around this drum. But at the same time, it's going to bring the tape past this erase head and in contact with the control head and the tracking head and the linear audio head and across the cap stand. It really is magical if you think about it. Somebody had to design all of this. So now it's going to pull the tape out and around and you can see how it's threaded it kind of in the shape of an M. That's where they get an M load system on these. The beta and uh, U-Matic were more of a U-load. That's where U-Matic comes from. They're all pretty similar. They're doing the same thing. It's got to wrap that tape almost all the way around the drum because remember you're at 180 degrees apart on those video heads. So if we hit play now, we can see that head to start spinning and it's going to advance the tape through the system. So this is the standard play speed of the 1.31 inches per second of actual tape speed moving across those heads. So pretty magical system. Now a thing that they did add as we talked about were the slower recording speeds of LP and EP which slowed the linear tape speed down and what that ended up doing was forcing those fields of video much much closer together and they had to be thinner and thinner so you got a lot of crosstalk and you got a lot of interference between the tracks and that's what lowered your effective resolution on the tape. Now that we've seen how the tape physically moves through the system and we understand how tape speed, or relative tape speed in this case, affects the bandwidth recorded and therefore the picture quality, let's explore what happens when we start slowing the tape speed down. Now I think this very feature, the one that allowed up to six, eight, or even more hours of recording onto a single tape, may have ruined the perception of VHS quality for a lot of people. Now, early VHS machines recorded only in SP mode. That's standard play. The tape moves at 1.31 inches per second. Now, soon after, LP mode, that's long play, was introduced. That halved the tape speed to 0.66 inches per second and doubled the recording time to four hours. Finally, EP or SLP mode was introduced. That's extended play or super long play. Now, that cut the tape speed to a third. That's only 0.44 inches per second, but it increased the recording time to six hours on a standard T120 cassette for NTSC. Now that may seem great, but remember that quality is directly related to tape speed because of the bandwidth that's needed for recording. Now I remember my parents recording everything in EPSLP mode to get the most bang for their buck with their tapes. The quality? Dubious at best, especially sound quality. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Now this is SP mode. This is the tape running at 1.31 inches per second. And you can see this is standard VHS quality that we're all used to. For those that are watching the completely VHS version, this is what you've been watching the whole video in so far. 
This is about the best quality that you're going to get from VHS. It actually only gets worse from here. Well, now we're looking at LP mode, long play. This has cut the speed in half to 0.66 inches per second. Now, I don't know if it was just my family or if it was everybody in general, but it doesn't seem like this speed was used much at all. It seems like people recorded in SP mode or EP mode to get six hours out of their tapes. A thing that I noticed when I was younger, if I tried recording in LP mode, it seemed like the fast forward and rewind seek where you could watch the video at the same time were a lot worse in this mode. Now, I know as time progressed, they actually made the head gaps smaller and added more heads to help with the tracking and the video quality when you got to those slower speeds. So let's hop over to EP and see what that looks like. Now, this is EP mode. This is a third of the tape speed of SP. So we're looking at 0.44 inches per second here. Now, the sound quality is even worse. The speed of the tape slows down quite a bit and the sound quality on the regular linear tracks is absolutely terrible. Hi-Fi is still pretty good. Now it actually took a little bit of innovation from the manufacturers to make this speed even possible. Now the quality is so bad that a lot of people kind of remember this being what VHS looked like. That's not really the case. But the manufacturers really did a good job making the head gaps smaller and the tracks as narrow as possible to keep the bleed over to a minimum. Is it perfect? No. But I'll tell you what, we had a lot of movies at home and you could basically fit three whole movies on one tape in EP mode. Now even as a kid I noticed that it looked terrible and as I got older and recorded my own stuff I did it in SP mode. Let's switch back. The fact that any of this was even possible still amazes me to this day. For me, digital lacks the magic. Just the fact that an analog video signal can be translated to this moving magnetic tape and then be recorded and played back still captivates my imagination. Now, am I suggesting that people run out and find a secondhand VCR and start collecting VHS tapes? No. Even though it amazes me from a technical and engineering standpoint, I still prefer my 4K television for watching a movie. No one would want to watch my videos if I produced each one on VHS. Now, technology advances and constantly improves. That's part of life. But even as time marches on and technology gets better and better, I think it's important to look back on what came before. Not only can you draw a line between the dawn of motion pictures and all the formats and methods leading up to our modern 4K or even 8K video, you can also connect all the personal experiences that people had. Technology shapes our lives, even the old obsolete stuff. Now that's all I have for today and I appreciate you taking the time to come along for this brief look at the magical VHS video system with me. Be sure to give me a like and a subscribe. You know, only 10% or so of viewers are actually subscribed to the channel, but many times that are repeat viewers. So if you're enjoying these videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's free, doesn't cost you a thing, but it really helps me. And it ensures that you don't miss another video. Until next time, happy listening. Or should I say, happy watching.